Well hi folks, first time up at the plot for a, a good month, I've not been up at all for a month so we'll see what's going on, I'm going to try and harvest a bit of stuff I'm just hoping that the rats haven't uh, turned up so we'll have a look and see what's going on Delve sunflowers looking a bit bedraggled now but I'm, I'm surprised they're still standing up like I said I've not been up for a month so things will be a bit of a mess giant sunflower, I think I better chop that off before it falls off, it's huge get some seeds out of it let's have a look what's going on in this bit I bet everything's gone over now there wasn't anything growing in here, I had one lettuce left I might be able to get a salvage a bit of lettuce out of there which isn't bad for almost November that one's obviously gone to sea I think there's an odd courgette over there and somehow I'm going to have to get the heads off those things to get some seed out. Now the last thing I did when I came up about a month ago was to start, believe it or not, filling in the trenches for the polytunnel because what I've decided to do is not to cover it, well it's just to cover this quarter and put a door on each side because everything grew so well outside then I thought well there's not much point in putting a cover on the whole lot because it brings into you know, into focus all the problems I get with water in, lack of water and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cover this bit, this quarter, which is the equivalent of like a f f uh, 15 foot wide by just over six foot. So it's still a decent enough size. And then just leave all this just for, just outside for the beds and possibly get a big net over part of it as well, so I can grow some brassicas in it. But that's the idea anyway. So like I said. All the effort that went into last year, well two years ago now nearly, digging all the trenches out like that. I've just filled them all back in again. So that's that's the plan so far. So let's have a look at the main bed. Just hope things have you can see there's a lot of weeds started. They're only annual weeds. So what I'll do with these, I'll just skim them all off. And it's a bit drier, it's been chucking down for the last week, so I'll skim all these off with my hoe. And I've got all the compost over there for the no dig bit and I'll just cover it all in compost and that'll do, that'll stop anything else germinating and because it's clean compost nothing will germinate in it how's the squash doing? we have a few little squashes on I don't know how right they are we've got a few I think there's quite a... oh Christ there's a few in there well <laughs> it's amazing what you find when you've not been up for a long time Another one there, that one looks right but it's got a bit of a split in but anyway it's better than nothing, at least I've got four on I think, so that's four squashes, turnips, the turnips are looking good, I'll pull a few of these up, I've been told to get some turnips, lovely, these are called uh, Milan Purple Top obviously because they've got a purple top but they're lovely and sweet and they're so easy to grow but what I'm doing with these I'll just pull the pull the biggest up I've got quite a lot growing and then leave the, the smaller ones to get a bit bigger I don't know what's been eating all the leaves there's been some he horrendous caterpillars this year I had some in my greenhouse and they've eaten everything they've eaten tomatoes beans everything you name it I mean look at that it's just eating a lot so I'll take this one so yeah pretty nice nice and sweet as well when you're taking quite small sweet and tender so we'll take some carrots looking a bit overgrown as you can see with weeds we'll see what we we'll see what we what comes out I still enjoy this bit after so many years oh yeah wow that's a monster look at that clean as a whistle as well it's the way to grow them, folks in the sand it's a bit of a faff getting it going but uh, it never seems to fail these are a little bit smaller doesn't necessarily mean they're any smaller underneath though which they're not as you can see Another cracker there, must have been two in that one. So we'll just empty this bed out. These are quite small. 
nonetheless, still good. Sorry for the camera work, it's hard work trying to do four things at once. So that's four nice little carrots, and not nice, not little ones, to go with the turnips. So as you can see with these boxes, I've got three boxes, 16 carrots in each. So I've still got another 32 to go out there, and I've put some in this smaller tub, so I'll empty those out sometime and show you if there's any difference in the in the size of those, but like I said, 16 in each, and with them being that big, we could keep us well past Christmas into spring nearly next year. And they just keep perfectly all over winter because it's so well drained, slugs don't bother them because they're in the sand, and it's just, to me, it's the best way to grow your carrots. So the leeks are looking all right, doing quite well. No problems as I can see, so I'll keep taking those. Make some good soup with those. And then the Brussels sprouts, I'm going to finally pull my first Brussels sprouts plant up. I'm going to take the whole plant, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm going to pull it all up, and then I'll see what it looks like. Jeez, there's some roots on that. I might need a second, second, uh, second go at this. Oh dear. So we'll have a look. Again, so we don't the camera work. I'll just take it over here. Oops. Put it on my, my box and let's have a look at it. So, got some sprouts. Whether they're full of snails or what, I don't know. Should have brought some uh, scissors, I suppose. Oh no, you can just snap these off, can't you? That's how they sell them in shops. They charge you about five quid for the privilege of picking your own sprouts. So I'll take them home anyway, pull them off. So I suppose if you, once you peel them back a bit, they might be alright. But, like I said, if you don't try, you never know. But it's the nearest I've ever got to a crop of uh, Brussels sprouts without them blowing. So, I think they've blown a bit, but they don't look so bad. Let's see what, I don't know how you take them off, do you just snap them off like that? look too bad so we'll get those home have a fiddle about see what they're like all right folks you know i left a few of my garlic bulbs to go to seed actually and i just wondered what had happened to them once they'd flowered and went to seed well they haven't produced seed they just appear to have produced what we used to call when i was growing giant onions is pips which are like miniature bulbs if you see they're like tiny little cloves so what I think I might do, take that home and next year plant a few of these or pot a few up and see what they turn into, whether they turn into a, a clove which then you can plant and turn into a bulb. I do not know but they're definitely not seed, they're either pips or miniature little cloves. So you live and learn. Like I said I've never done it before, never left one to go to seed and see what happens and that is what has happened. So we'll see what happens. So I'll just show you what I've picked today all right then folks that's my final harvest which isn't so bad considering it's almost november a few little squashes don't know how right they are but i'll leave them up windowsill and whatever little sunshine might brighten them up a bit i think that's the final lettuce final courgettes a few more carrots still plenty of those to come and a few more turnips so that's about it folks i'll see you later